What animal has other animals living up its bum? Let's go find out. Here's a clue. They breathe through their bum. They're named after a vegetable. They can have teeth in their bum. They suck up food like a vacuum, have toxic skin, and have animals that live in their bum. Meet the sea cucumber. It's a relative of sea stars and sea urchins. Now it's a pretty talented animal. What it does is it sucks up detritus and sand at one end and poos out clean sand at the other. Now its bum really is pretty talented in a variety of aspects. They've got anal respiratory trees. In other words, these guys breathe through their bum. Some of them have anal teeth and that's to stop things getting in your back end. And some, like this one, don't. That means other animals can get up there. Let's have a look and see what they might be. This is a pickled pearlfish. Now in the wild, these guys live up the rear end of sea cucumbers or holothurians. Now, from my point of view, they're pretty stunning animals. And one of the things that stands out for me is they've got no dorsal fin down through here. It's all been modified and just about lost. I mean, and that's pretty important for a couple of reasons. The main one I would have thought is, you know, if you're gonna live up the rear end of something, you actually don't want little sp sharp, spiky things. I mean, that's gotta seriously hurt. So it's lost those. And it's got basically a big, soft fin down the bottom. You know, by and large, the animal's streamlined. You know, sort of rounded that end, and then just nice, tapered end down here, so up it goes, no problems at all. Now, when you look at this thing though, when you look at and you compare it to your sea cucumber, now, and the first issue I would think as a fish that you have is which is the front, which is the back end. Now, the pearlfish has the same issue. And what they do is they probe. Now, now I mean that in a good sense. So he'll come to the front or one end and probe, and if that's not the right end, he'll come back down until eventually he smells the right end and then up you'll go. Now, Seriously cool, these guys. They'll live inside the, the sea cucumber, but they'll come out to feed. So they'll sneak out the back end, go out, feed, and then zip back inside again. Having said that, it's not just a simple relationship like that. The pearlfish will actually sometimes feed on the respiratory trees inside. It'll often feed on the mussels and things that are in there. But the other cool thing, it'll often breed in there as well. So the world record that I know of is 15 of these little fish in one sea cucumber. You know, and they then have a party in there, they breed, they lay eggs, and the eggs, like everything else in the sea cucumber, get squirted out the back end, they hatch, and the little pearlfish swim off elsewhere. I mean, all in all, a pretty spectacular way to live. But, you know, having said that, there have got to be better places in the world to live than up the rear end of a sea cucumber. Why would you want to live there? Well, the answer, I think, is pretty obvious. Not much eats sea cucumbers. They've got a toxic skin, so once they get to full size, there's not much eats them. So, if you're up a little fish with no sharp projections or anything, you can hide in there, nothing's going to eat you, you can sleep in there and not have to worry about eating at night, and if things get really tough, you can start to feed on the sea cucumber as well. All in all, for the fish, a real bonus. Still don't quite know what's in it for the sea cucumber though. So what's it like living up the back end of a sea cucumber? Well, that I don't know, but I've just bought this endoscope, never done this before, Let's, um, for the want of a better word, connect it up to the Wi-Fi on the phone, which is cool, and stick it up the rear end of a sea cucumber and see what happens. Okay, so it's going internal to the animal now. So there's, looking at that, that's obviously the, the lower intestine or where all the poo's coming out. Now there should be two chambers, one on either side, which are the respiratory trees. So I'll try and get that down the side. There we go, we're in the side there. So there you can actually see coming down into the respiratory chambers. And they're the respiratory trees sitting on the side there that have collapsed and just lying on the bottom of the animal. So that's where you live as a pearlfish. Seriously? I mean, that's, I mean, first off, that's a pretty horrific view, I must admit. But if that's what you live in, my God, there's seriously got to be better places to live. Oh, I think you can actually see the respiratory trees themselves. That is cool. Who would have thought a little endoscope and a phone would allow you to do this? Wow, that is awesome. So this is a fascinating relationship. 
But to me, like many of the things I study in science, it's opened more questions than I've got answers for. I mean, it's obvious the benefits to the pearlfish, but what benefits are there to the sea cucumber? I mean, obviously some sea cucumbers don't want the pearlfish in there. They've got anal teeth, but this species doesn't. Why? I mean, that's the million dollar question. But that's the nature of science.